Yu-Gi-Oh! is a very popular TCG and is known for its complicated gameplay. Konami is constantly updating the Yu-Gi-Oh! meta through banlist and by adding new cards to the card pool. Oftentimes, the newest meta cards are so strong that their prices become too expensive for the average player. Konami's solution to this problem is simple. Reprint these expensive cards. With more on the market, the average player can afford these cards much more easily. But what happens to the original sets with these cards? Are they still worth opening? In today's video, we're looking at what is considered one of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s strongest modern sets. Rise of the Duelist. Rise of the Duelist debuted in North America on August 7th, 2020. This set contained a ridiculous number of strong cards such as Triple Tactics Talents, Forbidden Droplet, Nadir Servant, and many more. It also was one of the first sets to contain a fifth Starlight, the DD Crow. Boxes of this set were around $80 on release, which is about 25% higher than an average core set. The hype was real, but three years later, every card in this set has been reprinted, some multiple times. All of the high-end non-Starlight rare cards have fallen in value, but the box prices continue to rise. If you want to purchase a Rise Rise of the Duelist box today, it would cost you about $250. In today's video, we find out if opening sets like this has any merit or if they're better left kept sealed. What's up guys, today we're gonna be opening up 24 packs of Rise of the Duelist, as you guys saw in the intro. This is the equivalent of one booster box, so right now about a $250 box, as I mentioned earlier in the video. And we're gonna see, is it worth opening something like this anymore? Because this is now a $20 pack right here, $20 for one pack. All of the cards besides the Starlight Rares have gone down. So it goes the opposite of what you think. The price of the sealed goes up, and then the price of the single goes down. So it gets harder and harder to make a profit as you go. Because if we open it up back in 20, 20, it was much, much easier. You could pull like a $90 card out of here. It was an $80 box. So you just make your money back right away. There's now no card in here that does that except for the Starlight Rares. But before we actually hop into it, we have a giveaway. I'll be giving away these two structure decks. First of all, we have a Albas Strike, and then we have a Legend of the Crystal Beast. All you have to do is like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications. Let me know, is it worth it to open something like this? Give me your opinion on it. And are there other sets that you think maybe are worth it in this time period? Or may are they all just not worth it anymore? Okay, let's just go ahead and start. We're going to be opening up about 250 $50 worth of blisters. I'm going to have both the 2020 price and the 2023 price pop up for all of our big pulls. So if we pull like anything like a secret rare or ultra rare, I'll try and have a price from 2020 and 2023 pop up. The value that's going to count against our $250 is the 2023 price, of course, though, to see if it's actually worth it. All right, let's start off with this thing. 24 blister packs, Rise of the Duelist. It's a pretty expensive opening these days, as I have told you guys. And uh, it's really sad to see like all these really nice cards, you know, they get really cheap after a while. They, they end up being like you know nine dollar cards and they used to be really expensive sad and good at the same time because they're more affordable which is great but then it just makes like opening a classic set just so not worth it so we're gonna do our best to actually pull something awesome see what happens uh, we're gonna see maybe it is worth it maybe we'll get a starlight those in fact have gone up for a lot of them we got dogmatic of punishment which is a great card that came as common in this set fright for jar we got dogmatic of theo dogmatic and nation i do love dogmatica and that's the this is the debut of those uh galloping gaia dark lord we got abyss actor and Gaia the Fierce Knight Origin. We have Gaia cards in here. If you don't remember, one of the Starlights is a Gaia card. This is also a bit of a trip down memory lane for me because back in 2020, this was my second stream that I ever did on YouTube. Chelsea and I opened a case of this set. I watched a little bit of it back and man, it was hard to watch because we were using a camera that was shaking all over the place. There was no music in the background. What's up guys, Ruxin34 here with a live stream of Rise of the Duelist case. Oh, there goes the camera. Gotta be careful. <laughs> and with Chelsea. So hopefully we'll get lucky and pull an epic Starlight. And before we actually start the live. Look, this is one of my first streams ever, okay? Have, have, have some understanding, Ruxin, okay? But yeah, it was pretty rough. But those were good times because we pulled amazing out of that case. If you guys don't remember, you guys can go check it out if you want to sit through some atrocity there. We got Edge Imp Scythe. We got the uh, Vespinado, the full. So far, we've probably made like $0 back. Junk Sleep, got DD Arc. Galloping Gaia, the Fright for Repair, Abyss Actor Twinkle Star, Dragon Maid Tidying, just a super. This is going to be a little bit different than like a booster box opening because as you guys know, the blister packs could have random ratios. If it was a booster box, you'd probably get, you know, a couple secrets, four ultras pretty much every time. Probably not a Starlight, but maybe. Out of here, like we could get six ultras, no secrets. We could get three secrets, no ultras, you know, something weird like that. So this, we'll just have to see. I mean, this this could, you know, have a little variable here, but I think it'll be fun. We got Spiral Fusion, Melfi Pony, Spiral Discharge, Melfi Tag, Spiral Reborn, Dracoon Lamp, Fright for a cool way, cruel whale, I should say. It looks like a One Piece character, to be honest. And then a Raid Raptor Arsenal Falcon. So we're starting off with all supers so far. Okay, still searching to make any money back on this opening. It really, you're gonna have, to, I'm gonna have to get some amazing pulls in general, just to like make half our money back in, for this. So it is pretty tough. 
If you do get a Starlight though, like I guess that's the reason. So if we're like looking for a reason to open stuff in 2023 of a set that most of the cards are reprinted, kind of like Dawn of Majesty, something we've opened recently. Uh, a lot of the cards are just, you know, not worth anything anymore because they've all had reprints. There's another Raid Raptor Arsenal Falcon. But if you're looking for the Starlights, those cards usually age pretty well because it's like, okay, really expensive box, not really worth opening for anything except the Starlights. The Starlights gotta go up because there's gotta be some value somewhere, right? So uh, yeah, that's that's kind of like the, uh, the bread and butter, but you guys know it's one in two cases to actually pull a Starlight. So that happening in one box is a, you know, a one in 24 chance about like whatever that is, like 5% or something, even less than that. Mulfi Rabbit, Galloping Gaia, Fright for Repair, Bizactor Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, the Cursed Dragon, Curse of Dragon, the Cursed Dragon, and our first Ultra Rare, Artillery Catapult Cannon. Okay, interesting card. Probably not gonna make our 250 back, but we have an Ultra Rare. Okay, our first foil. I mean, like, I guess technically a super is a foil, but I don't call those foils anymore, even though they're technically foil cards. I mean, you're getting you on every single time, so it's really not that crazy. Artillery Catapult Turtle. I mean, the retrain of Catapult Turtle, pretty cool when you think about it, but it is not that valuable. I think it did have about a dollar value back in 2020, which is not too bad. Curse of Dragon, the Cursed Dragon, Dogmatica Encounter, Fright for Cruel Whale, the DD Arc, and the Ancient Warrior's Oath, Double Dragon Lords, another super rare. So as of right now, even if we open this in 2020 with an $80 box value, uh, we would not even be close right now. But we also have not pulled a Starlight Rare yet. And if we did get this at Walmart, you know, $3.99 per pack, we'd be paying about 96 bucks. So that would be pretty expensive for those blisters. That's why uh, buying them at Walmart is a lot more expensive than buying a booster box, you know, with a coat with Sassiato or something like that. Speaking of, go check out Photon Hypernova if you haven't yet. Use code Hypernova Ruxin, I think, for 5% off. You guys can get way less than a $96 box. We got a Dark Lords, we got a Diameter. Heavenly Dragon Circle, Captain Roland, the Diced Dice, the Melfi Finney, Thunderhand, Dark Lord Nurgal, and oh, an Ice Dragon's Prison. Now we're talking, this was a big one in 2020 and also a pretty good card still to this day. But as I mentioned, reprints. This thing has been reprinted. I think it was Ghost from the Past 2 this was in, something like that. And uh, same rarity, I think, too. Actually, I do remember this card being like $4 on release. This card went up to like 20 or 30 bucks because I sold all of mine for $4 huge mistake i mean i didn't have that many because i only opened one case back then but still it went from four to like 20 or 30 so that card could be counted as like four or it could be counted as like 20 like a, a couple weeks after release okay a couple of ultra rares ice dragon's prison that's pretty good at first people didn't really realize how good it was i think and then they realized this card is insane so it got pretty expensive and then of course the reprint not too long ago actually might have been in the mega tens i feel like we might did we get a uh, no we got a prismatic secret rare i think of that Okay, we got Heavenly Dragon Circle, Horn of Oliphant. Is that a Lord of the Rings reference? We got Pony, Dogmatic of Punishment, the Finny, Fright for Repair, the Unauthorized Boot Up Device, Dark Lord Uprising, and a Holtzer Rare Speedroid Car Turbo. I don't think this one was ever good, so nothing too crazy there. But hey, Speedroids, people like Roids, all right? I mean, do people, I guess people like Roids? It's an anime archetype, but I really don't know anyone that's a huge Roid fan. I like some of the Roids, but I'm not like an overall Roid stan, I guess you could say. Uh, I don't know. don't think they're that great. Let's see. That's three Ultras, no secrets. Kind of like box-like so far. We got a Red Potent, Edgem Scythe, the Vespinado, the Playhouse, Mommy, Cursed of Dragon, the Cursed Dragon, Dogmatica Encounter, and Gaia the Magical Knight. A very cool super rare. That is certainly not going to have any value in no matter what year it is. It's just a super rare Gaia card. I mean, Gaia has not been playable literally ever. I mean, Legend of Blue Eyes, it wasn't good. It's a two tribute 2300. It has never been good. Only Yami Yu could use it because he could just throw it down without tributing and stuff like that. Okay, next pack. Nothing crazy there. Spiral Discharge, the Haunt Claire, the Ancient Warrior Saga, Indulge Dark Lord, Dark Lord Nurgal, Melfi Mami, Dogmatic Nation. We have the Thunder Hand and Ice Dragon's Prison. See, this is something you would not see if you were open a regular booster box. You probably would not get two of the same Ultra Rare, but back in 2020, if we had held these for a couple weeks after pulling them, this would be a great opening. That would have been like half our box back. Next pack. I feel like honestly, like with the ones we've pulled so far, we haven't really pulled any of the ones that have like tanked because Ice Dragon's Pri Prison on release was one of the few cards that wasn't overhyped. Like most of them were like, maybe not overhyped, but appropriately hyped. That one was not appropriately hyped at the time. And then it did get appropriately hyped and it went way up. 
Super Every Samurai Scarecrow, we have the Melfi Rabbit, we've got the Astolfo, the Red Potent, the Fluffle Dolphin, Dogmatica Encounter, the Capricious Dark Lord, Phil Melfi Playhouse, I don't know what I'm saying, and the Dragon Maid Tidying, Dragon Maid cards are in the set, I totally forgot about that. Let's keep it going, so far no secrets out of these, uh, these packs, so these are, as I've said, blisters, so they're a little bit random, we could get no secrets, hopefully that's not the case. I would trade in no secrets for a Starlight though, I don't care which Starlight, Gaia, I, even at 100 bucks or what, 130, I'd be down for it, we got Dogmatica a punishment spiral fusion melty pony dogmatic encounter it would be funny to pull a starlight just ruin the whole premise of this video like yeah you can't make your money back and then we make our money back because of a starlight and then we have a nemesis keystone even though the gaia would not actually make our money back i think the rest of them would rise of the duelist uh dd crow is about like 475 uh ecclesia is way up there it's like 600 something which is wild because it has an ultimate rare so i guess that's just the preferred printing the best one is the uh the ttt it's still over 700 dollars uh, that's a crazy one. Okay. Super Happy Samurai Scarecrow. Fright for Jar. Can we get a secret rare out of here and see if we can make some money back? Melfi Fanny, Thunderhand, Dark Lord Nurgle, Fury of the Kaishin, the Revenge Rally. That's it. Oh, that's it. That's the super rare. Lots of supers so far, but that's Yu-Gi-Oh for you. Slightly over halfway. We've pulled all of our ultras if this were a regular box. It's not, but you know, you normally pull four ultras in a box, two secrets. So we'd still be looking for secrets. Hopefully it turns out where we do get two secrets. That would be great. I would be very happy pulling two secrets. Hopefully there are some good ones. Basically, not every, but almost every secret in the set is pretty good in its own right. Uh, there's some that are bigger than others, obviously. We got the Iron Punch, Haunt Claire, the DD Evil, Melfi Tag, Spiral Reborn, the Dracoon Lamp, Fright for Cruel Whale, and a Raid Raptor Revolution Falcon, Air Raid. So far, this experiment's not turning out so well for, you know, encouraging people to open these up. So if you're ever looking at older packs and you want to pay like, you know, 20 bucks, which a lot of the older packs aren't that expensive, but 2020 packs are getting pretty crazy. So if you're looking at Rise of the Duelist, you're looking at Battles of Legend, Armageddon, stuff like that. Those are really, really expensive and they're not usually worth opening because you have to get like a really high end chase card like Battles of Legend Armageddon. You got to get that 10K dragon or something. Oh! Oh, and there's a nice ultra dogmatica ecclesia the virtuous i totally thought this was a secret in the set but this is just a crazy ultra rare this is one that has been severely hurt by the passing of time the reprints this was 26 dollars in 2020 so like crazy that's why i thought it was a secret because i just completely forgot it was just an expensive ultra an amazing card in the dogmatica deck if you're playing with invoked and stuff like that really really good and it's had multiple reprints. It's had better looking reprints, like the Prismatic Secret Rare from the Tin. There's just a lot of better versions. That people would go with the Starlight if they want to go really high end. But the Ultra Rare has just been, you know, passed by the wayside. It's like five bucks now, something like that. And, you know, you got to open a $20 pack to get a $5 Ultra that used to be crazy expensive. All right, next pack. A question that I have is, at what point do cards like Dogmatica Ecclesia ever go back? Oh, wow, what in the world? That is potentially uh, a tampered with blister. Could, I mean, these looked like they were from Walmart, so it's possible that these were, you know, or at least this one specifically is messed with. Looks like it got cut straight through though, so I don't know what happened here. I'm a little distracted with what I was gonna say. First of all, let's inspect this pack. It looks like this just got completely sliced through. We'll have to see. If there's nothing in here, you know, we can be a little sus. But as I was gonna say, when do cards like that ever start going back up? Do they become like, oh, the original print of Dogmatica Ecclesia? Or is it you just go with the high rarity? Like, do you go with the Starlight? That's probably the one that, you know, holds the value. Having the two versions probably hurts it. Indulge Dark Lord, we got the Iron Punch, Karishin, the Nation, Galloping Gaia, Capricious Dark Lord, and yeah. So it looks like there was a foil in one of these at one point. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, and it was taken out, unfortunately. So hopefully that was not like a Starlight Rare or something. Next pack, Rise of the Duelist. I'm just I'm just gonna say that there was a Triple Taxis Talent Starlight Rare in one of those. Just keep that in mind. One, two, three, four. If you guys remember when I pulled that, I also pulled the DD Crow. It was a very crazy case. Fry for Jar, we got the Dogmatic of Theo, Dolge Dark Lord, Melfi Tag, Fury of Karishin, Dogmatic of Nation, Galloping Gaia. Oh, and a Dogmatic of Maximus, which ironically is the secret rare of dogmatica this should definitely be the secret rare right i mean it does have the starlight but still pretty weird that this was the secret rare pretty good card but not on the level of the ecclesia even this one back when this first came out was only 20 bucks compared to the 25 or 26 for the ecclesia but still pretty so i mean pretty solid this one's got reprinted in the tens as well 
So they've all been hit by the reprint bug. Nice to see that there were secret rares in here. So the guy who opened the pack, I guess, missed the secret rares, one away. Seven packs left in our, um, you know, make makeshift booster box here. It's a little bit of a, I almost said misprint. I mean, then we have like one being tampered with. That's another thing you gotta worry about buying from Walmart. People will go through there and sometimes try and mess with the blisters, take stuff. I'm glad we got a secret rare though. Melt behind seek, pretty normal. We have five ultras, one secret. It's kind of like a box. Horn, we got the Vespinado, the Gardena. Fury of Kaishin, we got the boot up device. Twinkle Little Star, the Melfi tag. Oh, and another secret back to back, Fallen of Albaz. This is one of the better ones for a while, but then of course this got multiple prints. One was in a structure deck, I think as a common, then there was an ultimate rare in the OTS pack. This has seen many reprints since 2020, but I think back then it was pretty decent. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, this was only a $5 card, so I think this didn't actually go up until all of the cards and the support for the archetype actually came out. Like, was that a couple years later? Was that 2022 in that game? When was that? I guess it was around when this Albaz Strike Structure deck that we're giving away came out because this made it really easy to play the uh, branded deck and it was really, really strong for a few months there. It was actually really, really good. This was like 2022, I think, when this came out, maybe late 2021. I'm getting my dates confused, but that card was a little bit of a sleeper for a while. So we've actually pulled some of the Rise of the Duel sleepers so far. We are actually pulling more than box ratio now. Two secrets, five ultras. We're, you're gonna see like how we're doing yeah, you know, compare. Oh, and we got another tampered blister. That is unfortunate. So yeah, unfortunately, some of these definitely have been tampered with. I don't even know, like, what was in there? Were they getting triple tactics talents or what? Like, what, what's going on? We're just gonna have one, two, three, four. I mean, are there eight cards in here? Yeah, so there's no foil in here. Uh, that's always exciting, you know, getting some uh, blisters. You know, these are $20 now, so that hurts. Uh, it's kind of, how do they even do that? I mean, I guess they're going through the top maybe and then, you know, pulling them out like that. I don't know. So even with those two that have been tampered with, we've pulled over ratio. Oh, there's more. Oh, no. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I might have to talk to the guy I bought these from because, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a kind of unfortunate. I don't know. I'm assuming he didn't know, but one, two, three, four. Yeah, no foil again. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just imagine if we had gotten these without being tampered with. We might have actually gotten some crazy cards. Who knows? More, more. No. Okay, how can we tell? Like, where, where, how is this happening? It's coming through. Oh, there it is. That's how you see it. Okay, so a little, a little extra lesson here today. If you go to Walmart, double check all around the blister. They're not getting, so it looks like they cut them, pull it out, open them up like that. And then you get, uh, yeah, you get yourself some open blisters, unfortunately. So fortunately they were not all like that, but I mean, how many is that now? That's like four or five of them that have been tampered with, it seems. Well, here's the thing. It actually doesn't really throw off our experiment too much because we've already pulled over box ratio like pulling too much over box ratio wouldn't be too realistic so uh yeah i guess wait let's double check right here that one looks good okay so this might be a real blister that's good um hopefully the rest are yeah that looks good four or five of our box were tampered with unfortunately this one definitely has an extra card a aka the normal amount of cards let's see if we can get something big what if there was a starlight that'd be hilarious the guy's like you know cutting through them and then we get a starlight rare Okay, six wins. We got Discharge, Boot Up Device, Dark Lord Uprising, Nexus, Dark uh, Infer Noble Knight Magus, and a Performal Pal Odd Eyes Metal Claw. All right, pretty cool looking dude. He's got like a Wolverine, you know, action going on over here. Final two packs. It's been a fun video. <laughs> I mean, we've done, I mean, multiple things have happened. First of all, we've gotten scammed for a couple packs. Make that another pack right there. Uh, we've also reviewed a very old and expensive set. We have pulled a few secret rares and it's been interesting for sure. Uh, yeah, make sure to leave a comment down below, guys, if you guys uh, want to see more like this. And it looks like the last one is also a scam. So at least six of these were were scam packs, which is unfortunate. Uh, it's also a little weird because like not all the packs were like this. I don't know. Maybe I can get a slight refund, but I, I don't know. We'll have to find out. That would be nice to get a refund for some of these open open cards because yeah, that's that's like six packs that we paid like over $100 for. So overall, this is a lot like a box. We've got the two secrets. We got five ultras. We could basically say like we only got one Ice Dragon's Prison. You could kind of do that. And uh, it's basically like a box. Uh, then we have the, you know, the six mess with packs, but that kind of makes what it would be like to open a box in 2020. We're gonna have the value if you opened in 2020, the value if you opened in 2023 right here. We certainly did not make money 
in either, I don't think. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more epic content like this. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Daxer, JT Show, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Deanna, Dizzy, Flexi Boy, Hoppus, Choice 333, Mycycle, James Jance, TCG Trusted Cards, America Deutscher, Supreme, Sage 21, Frankie Martinez, Anna Tai Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Mimic Gecko, Shadowfall, and Thomas McLean. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.